Brian Danielson versus Zack Sabre Jr. Huh. All right. Um, so I mentioned earlier that Claudio and uh, Josh Barnett had a match very unlike what an AEW audience is used to seeing. Well, that goes like triple, quadruple, quintuple for this one because they did a bunch of holds. Couple of kicks here and there, some uppercuts, maybe a chop or a headbutt or two. But by and large, it was holds and takedowns and the transitions and counters thereof. And it was glorious. It was just glorious. The people were into it. Uh, the, the, the finger manipulation spots that Zach does, people were totally into that. There was a point, and I wish I could tell you exactly what it was, but there was some sort of point where... Uh, Danielson had Zach down, had him in a hold, and things looked finished. And Zach did like two full loops and ended up just back on his feet, and Danielson is up on, down on the mat looking up at him. And a guy to my right jumps to his feet and says, how did he do that? It was like a magic show. And their selling was awesome. Their intensity was awesome. The competitiveness was awesome. And this is the one, where, again, we were live. I, I've been told that Moxley and also Nigel were were losing their minds about how great this was and also how much they each wanted their respective guy to win. Nigel standing up for his fellow Englishman Saber and uh, standing against the Clam Digger Danielson. And, uh, of course, Moxley, a big Danielson fan. But they're losing their minds. It's funny because you listen to, if you watch them and listen to their media scrums and stuff, Brian Danielson and John Moxley would each tell you that the other guy is the best wrestler in the world. Yes. The mutual admiration is quite strong here. But anyway... The story here, and what's going to be, I believe, the cause for the eventual rematch, they had a gentleman's agreement to have this match to determine who was the world's best technical wrestler. And there were some strikes here and there, and kicks, and headbutts, and uppercuts. But on the whole, each guy wanted to trap his opponent in a pinning combination or a submission hold and get the win that way. And after 20-whatever minutes of trading back and forth this, Brian Danielson busts out his running knee strike that has won so many matches and so many championships and so many pay-per-view matches for him in the past. And uh, I, I forget if Zach kicked out of one or if he just decided to do a second one. But regardless, it took two knee strikes to keep Zach down. And Danielson gets the win. This more than delivered on the hype. It was unlike anything I've ever seen before. And uh, keep in mind, Zach once said that having a technical wrestling match in front of an American audience is like reading Shakespeare to a dog. And this specific particular American audience was totally into the Zack Sabre Jr. match. Yes, it's just like the MJF thing. If you would have said, you know, five years ago, ah, oh, we're going to do Zack Sabre Jr. and Brian Danielson in a technical wrestling match on an American pay-per-view, people would have said, eh, it'll never get over. Well, this got over, and uh, it was a fantastic match. And Zack Sabre Jr., you know, he worked over the broken arm. Oh. Because he's a prick. Thank you for reminding me of that. Yes. It, it was it, the, the point, there was a point where uh, there, I think they were trading elbow, which elbows or uppercuts. And Danielson is hitting left-handed uppercuts. And Sabre is no selling them, dares him, hit me for the good arm, bastard. He taunts him and baits him into throwing some elbows with the with the, uh, the right arm, which is normally Danielson's a good arm, except it's broken. And so when uh, he threw that and Dan uh, Sabre countered with a kick to the bad arm, that was genius stuff. Both guys were actually working each other's arms, arms and hands, because uh, there was like a, a splash to the arm at one point. A top rope splash to the arm was done. Uh, but yes, it was a, 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 a thinking man's match as well. Well, you know, D uh, Danielson says he's only got about a year left of full-time wrestling and he's got a lot of big matches he wants to do and obviously it's going to be probably Danielson and Okada 2 at the Tokyo Dome and so he had to beat Sabre here but I would not be the least bit surprised if they did their rematch at next year's Forbidden Door in June Danielson puts him over Zack Sabre Jr. is the new best technical wrestler we got to rename the fucking Observer Award and the rest is history. But yeah, this match was fantastic. I must watch this match again. It was like great. Like it was a fantastic match. But it's very different watching it from, you know, 
however far up we were. You got a screen. Sometimes you look at the screen. Sometimes you're looking down at the mat. You know, you want to look at the mat, but they're doing technical wrestling, so you want to see exactly what they're doing. It's not like watching it on TV. Yeah. So I need to watch this one again to determine if it was truly the greatest match of all time. As it was, it was a match of the year contender. Mm Mm-hmm. And I still ranked it a little bit below that Elite Dragon Ob match. Okay. But I, I reserve the right to change my mind. Absolutely. Because it was fantastic. Absolutely. Uh, there was a point this weekend on Friday or Saturday when Kota Ibushi uh, tweeted from SeaTac International Airport about what a giant clusterfuck that place is and how like the taxi line was two hours long or something. Yeah, it fucking sucks. I am very happy to report that eventually he overcame the perils of the airport and arrived mm-hmm. at the building. So it's Kota Ibushi and Kenny Omega and uh, uh, Chris Jericho. Versus Sammy Guevara and Kanosuke Takeshita and Will Ospreay. It's insanely awesome. Everyone, you, you have five bona fide superstars and Sammy who's on his way there. They're trying to get him there. And uh, everyone looked great. Everyone hit all the big spots and looked awesome. Will, Will Ospreay may be a superhero for all I know. Uh, Takeshita, I don't know if we've talked about this before. The thing that really stands out about him, and it was very obvious here, I mean, he's clearly a very athletic guy and and, 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 and flies around and, and does great uh, stuff, but he's a big, big, big dude. Oh, yeah. He's, he's a huge dude. He's over everyone in the match, like four or five inches. And, uh, you know, in pro wrestling, it's good to be big. And so it makes him a big, scary monster. Ibushi was Ibushi, and then even late in the match, uh, when the, 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 the Callis family was running wild, and the referee was calling this basically a lucha match. You, you can tag if you want to. If y'all want to be in the ring at the same time, that's fine too. Whatever. And uh, but they're the the Callis is triple teaming guys one by one. And I'm trying to figure out where Ibushi is because I was I was sitting on the opposite side of the ring from his corner. And so he's like climbing the steps in there, but he's essentially crawling in like a zombie. And uh, he slowly gets to his feet like a zombie. And he does the uh, <laughs> zombie Ibushi thing like he was doing when he after he won the G1 and got the Tokyo Dome main event where he, you can't hurt this fucker. And he's just like eating eight shots and hitting one that drops them almost like a she actually and uh he's running around with all that stuff and that's crazy great and eventually it comes down to jericho and sammy alone in the ring and uh there's a whole big hullabaloo going on jericho is going for the walls but callus gets a hold of floyd jericho's own bat and that weasley bastard don callus smashes jericho in the face and Sammy Guevara gets his pin over Chris Jericho. And Jericho's rough summer continues. He's had a bunch of big losses here. Tons of fun and action-packed in the last few minutes. Yeah, I thought this match was great. I, honestly, I thought the match would be better just because of the level of talent that they had in there. But, uh, you know, they had a, a fabulous match. Bushi's looking a little bit better. It's still kind of still kind of rough going. But, you know, he did the... Uh, it took a little while, but he did that golden triangle moonsault. Yeah. And the last time he tried it, he uh, he really had a problem with it. But he got it here, and, you know, they, they worked around him the best they could. And Jack was talking about how he's in the match. He's just saying, thank you. Just thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And we're telling him, we're only 10 minutes in. <laughs> Not even after the match. It was during the match. Yeah. But he was obviously having fun. And there were, uh, I mean, it was just... All these crazy spots. It was a, it was a great match, and uh, I enjoyed it. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you? WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, 
Full access to the Wrestling Observer Newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.